All right, so we're going to be doing a, a drive motor IC replacement on this Contax G1. So I can't find anything particularly wrong with the chip. There's no indication of a burning or anything like that, but we're gonna go ahead and replace it anyways and see if that fixes our uh, automatic winding issue that this camera has been having. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit of flux and then I'm gonna put some solder on the end of my iron and I'm just gonna start on one side of the board. Um, you could use a heat gun, but just given the proximity to everything else, I prefer to use just a hand iron just to make sure that I'm not melting anything. Alright, so we got our chip off, just started on one side and moved my way to the other, and now we're going to go ahead and put our replacement IC on. So we got the chip all soldered up. It looks good on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. I'm gonna get these uh, screws put back in and just get it reassembled to the point that I can put the batteries in, test it out, and uh, make sure it's working. This is a grounding point right here, so this screw does need to go in when you're uh, testing the camera if you're replacing the IC. All right, so I'm gonna go grab a roll of film now. We're gonna load it up and just shoot through it real quick and then reload a spool of film to see if we can replicate what the issue was originally. All right, so we're gonna throw some batteries in here, get this uh, loaded up and see what we have. So it looks like everything's good so far. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the top cover back on. Um, I'm not gonna put the side buttons just yet until I uh, know that everything else is working. But we need this on to be able to turn the power on. So the way this camera works is it just loads up the first frame. Uh, some cameras will load up the whole roll at once and then backtrack the film back into the canister, but just uh, two different design options. Alright, so I'll turn the camera off. It says that we are wound back up, so let's check that out. And indeed it looks like we are. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the lead back out on this one and I'm going to load it up into the camera and see if we can sit around for a minute and see if it auto rewinds on its own. Alright, so I got the spool back out. We're going to go ahead and load this back up and I'm just going to sit here and wait and watch. Have that there. I'm going to maybe just turn it off and on a few times, see if I can 
get it to do something. But at this point, it's just going to be a waiting game, and if something happens, I'll get back to you on it. And Otherwise, uh, we'll continue with the reassembly on the camera. All right, so it looks like everything went well with IC replacement, so we're going to go ahead and take the cover back off. Uh, I'm going to get everything a little bit adjusted um, and cleaned up before I have it fully reassembled. But we're just going to shoot off a couple of these shots here on this last little bit of film that's in there. So I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to take out the film, take out the batteries, and then again take off that bottom and top cover that we put back on. There's a quick little thing that I want to point out. Um, sometimes the, the crystal that's used for the uh, microprocessor in here can sometimes come loose. So we can take a look at that real quick. Um, I don't think that's a problem here but I have repaired that as a fault in a previous Contax G1s. And also, uh, in the Contax G2, I've had a few cases where I've had screws come loose here and then work their way underneath there. So those are some things just to keep in mind, look out for. Alright, so now that we've got that back off, I want to show you real quick the crystal oscillator that I was talking about. It's this one right here, and sometimes one of the legs can break free, and what happens when it does that is you'll get intermittent power issues, like sometimes the camera will turn on, and then it'll just power off and keep powering on and off, and maybe if you push on the bottom, you push on the side, it'll turn on for a little bit. But if you're having an issue with that, that's probably, probably what you'd be looking for right there. But I'm going to go ahead and get all this front area cleaned up, and then I'm going to proceed with the full reassembly. So for this, we're going to put the uh, little buttons in while it's upside down, and then we're going to assemble the top cover on while the camera's upside down, or just sideways as well, whichever position you can get these buttons to stay in while uh, getting that top cover on there. So we got that on, we're going to go ahead and put the bottom cover on now as well. And you just want to be careful of your wires if you've moved them around a little bit here. I rerouted this uh, red power wire back over the left side because it was pushing um, up here on this side above the chip. Uh, I guess real quick, yeah, that's the main microprocessor. So Sometimes if you get water damage, that's one of the first places it'll go down into. And so if you're having issues with uh, powering on, uh, just try to remove the bottom cover and check and inspect for liquid damage there. All right, so we're going to get these top dials right back on. Um, just going to start with the right one and move on to the left. So you want to make sure to get these screws pretty snug and tight because uh, you want them to push down on that little guide washer that goes in. also want to be careful of the way that you put these guys in because they are uh, one directional you have to make sure that you have that side in uh, correctly otherwise your uh, locking position tab won't be correct now we're going to go ahead and get this little dial top put in um, I will have to just double check the position uh, put the batteries in in a second and just make sure that I have everything 
set up correctly. These are also uh, unidirectional, so you have to make sure that you get this in correctly as well, too. So, again, real quick, I'm going to just put the batteries in and make sure that that's set to the correct orientation. If it's not, we're going to go ahead and uh, readjust. So we can see that we're backwards. Um, since the locking position is set on the opposite side, it's showing AF and infinity when the dial is freely moving. So you can see we rotate it over and then it locks on that side. So we're backwards on that and we'll get that taken off and readjusted correctly. So now that we have it adjusted correctly, we just rotated that piece over and we can see our locking position and then infinity, uh, both are on that side now. So all the way down we're infinity and then in that locked position is AF. All right, so now we're gonna get this other dial assembly put back on. Uh, we'll get this all set up here once we're done getting this one here. So we just need to check real quick which shutter speed we're on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek inside here. Currently we're set at 1 30th of a second. So can just get this guy back on here and then make sure that we're lined up correctly with where our uh, dial would want to be. So I'll move the mounting holes uh, this direction so that way I can access them. Alright, so I have it in bulb mode now because uh, I believe the other one was shutter sync and that way I can just see real quick here. But it does look like that is the correct position that we wanted in. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy screwed down. And then we're also going to get our uh, focal distance dial put down in there as well. And we can see that we have this one in the correct position too, just because it locks when you get to the shutter sink and doesn't allow you to move over until you push the button down and then extend past. So uh, those are two things to look for when you're assembling this again is to make sure that you have everything in the correct position, otherwise it won't lock the way you want it to. All right, so we're just gonna do one final check. We can see that we're in the AF mode here and that this is locked. And as we move it around, we're approximately at the same position that it's indicating on the dial. Right now we're at one two thousandth of a second, 1,500. Going down the, uh, the shutter speeds, everything's working. And so all we're gonna do now is get the last screws in on the top and then get our grip um, put back down on it as well. And for this piece here, we're just gonna use again that same method that we used earlier with the suction cup. Uh, whatever you have that works, that gives you a good grip, uh, just go for it. I mean, there's no real right way of doing this one um, just because it's sort of a unique a unique screw system that 
you don't see very often on most cameras. A lot of the times you can use a lens wrench tool because they usually have cutouts on both sides, but this one just doesn't have that. All right, so now that we've got that down, we're gonna get our grip reattached. We need some more adhesive on the back of there. So you can either use two-sided tape or whatever works for you. I probably would avoid using super glue in this case just because it can creep down into the camera. So for mine, I'm just gonna rely on the adhesive that's still there because it's still pretty tacky, but I'm just gonna go ahead with this uh, Duro glue around the edges just to kind of reinforce it and make sure that it stays glued down. So at this point, we've got the camera all cleaned up and reassembled. This is the chip that controls the forward and reverse direction of the motor that's used to wind this film, and it also controls uh, another gear inside the camera, I forget, off the top of my head. But uh, this is pretty much one of the most common problems that I've seen as a failure point on these cameras. Um, overall, they're just awesome cameras. It's uh, pretty much the flagship model for uh, Contax's rangefinder system. So you have the Contax G1, and there are two variants there. You have the G1 green label, which is the one that we have here and then there's the G1 silver labels. They're fairly similar. Uh, the green label has a bit of an upgrade over the silver label um, in terms of lenses and the AF functionality on a couple lenses. Hopefully uh, you found all this useful if uh, you have the same problem with your contacts. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty easy repair when it comes down to it. It's just taking the top, front, uh, and bottom off. It's not really as involved as removing any of the ribbon cables or anything like that. So overall, just a cool camera. Um, really enjoy just the, the pictures that come out of these, especially with the Zeiss 45 F2. Um, but if you have any questions or comments or anything, just uh, leave them down below and I'll try to get back to you on it. But that'll be it for this one and I'll see you later.